Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second webinar of Ballot Box Spaces, Basics, Information Every Voter Needs, which is from the hosted by the League of Women Voters of Pennsylvania. My name is Meg Pierce. I am the Executive Director of the League of Women Voters of PA. The League is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that seeks to empower voters and defend democracy. We hope to make government, elections, and voting accessible to everyone, which brings me to tonight's event. Ballot Box Basics is a free webinar series open to the public. This meeting is being recorded and it's also streaming live on Facebook. Our sessions will discuss important topics like registering to vote, voting integrity, finding your polling place and voter ID requirements, election security, constitutional amendments, Pennsylvania government, and more. So please watch our website for more information about ballot box basics webinars upcoming in the fall. A couple of housekeeping items for tonight's event. Please keep discussion in the chat and questions for our panelists in the Q&A. We will be answering questions tonight using the Q&A function at the end of the session. As you're coming in, feel free to drop your name and where you're coming in from. I'm now pleased to introduce tonight's presenters, Jamie Mogul and Roberta Winters. Jamie Mogul has spent her career working to amplify the voices of everyday people, first as a consumer protection attorney, and more recently representing employees in workplace discrimination at her own law firm, J.R. Mogul Law. She is a lifetime league member and currently the president of the League of Women Voters of Lower Marion and Narberth. We're also joined tonight by Roberta Winters, another longtime league member. Roberta was a teacher in the Radnor Township Schools for over 30 years and also served in leadership roles in the Radnor Township Education Association. She recently stepped down as the Radnor League of Women Voters president in June of 2021, having served three terms as president. She remains active with the Radnor League and we are grateful for her time this evening. With that, I'll turn it over to our panelists to begin their presentation. Well, hi, I'm Roberta Winters. And I'm Jamie Mogul. <laughs> and today we'll be discussing voter integrity and access. And that's a huge topic. But we're going to focus on giving you, the voters, the kind of information you need and facts to give you the peace of mind about our elections in Pennsylvania. We welcome questions. And as Megan said, please remember to use the Q&A functions. So let's get started because there's a lot to cover. I live in Delaware County, as you probably figured out. Delco, and Jamie lives in Montgomery County called Monco. Well, recently I had those new voting machines put into my polling place. Was that true for you too, Jamie? Uh, sure, I love it, Roberta, you get right to it. And I should just say, pardon if I do cough a little. Um, I unfortunately recovered from COVID, but there's still a little bit of cough. Um, but yes, you know, each of our 67 counties uh, was required to get new voting machines. And I say each of our 67 counties, because you and I may know, because we're with the league and we do work with elections, but many people don't know that each of our counties separately administers elections. So it may be, you know, and there were nine voting machines um, that were okayed um, by, and we're gonna, I think we're gonna get to that, um, you know, that were okay by the Secretary of State. Um, so you may have a different voting machine, uh, you, your county, as well as Monco, where I live, we have um, where you fill out a ballot, you know, you fill in the bubbles, then you put it into a scanner. But other counties like Philadelphia, which is right next to us, they have a touchscreen machine. So there are different machines, um, but all counties were required to get new voting machines so that they had an auditable, so that were able to be audited because they have a paper trail. So when I used to visit the polls, I used to have this lever that I would pull down and the machine would register my vote magically. Do you mean to tell me those weren't very secure? Basically, yes. I mean, some of those machines, you know, were 50 plus years old and we weren't able to confirm 
we being any, you know, whether it's the board of elections or people weren't able to confirm the results because there was no paper trail, right? So you vote and there's whether a ballot or printout, if you're using a touch screen, there's now a paper trail, which allows us to audit. So consider in the 2016 election, um, we know that former President Trump won, or we're told, won by some 40,000 votes in Pennsylvania, but it's hard to believe what those levered machines, right, where you went in and you press something or pulled down the lever, there was actually no way to confirm or deny those results. Um, and that's shocking to people, but there was a lawsuit by former presidential candidate Jill Stein. Um, she didn't win, but she did do something great for Pennsylvania because due to that lawsuit, it was required that all Pennsylvania voting machines have an auditable paper trail. So that's really uh, something that people should feel really good about. You know, I know some people go in and they're like, where's the machine? I want the lever, you know, but this is a good thing that we have. Well, I'm glad we now have an audible paper trail, but you know, I'm not as familiar with technology as you are. And so those computer touchscreens and scanners, you know, they sort of get me a little nervous. So a lot of people think, well, you know, those computers could be hacked or they get viruses and, you know, the results could be changed. Do I need to worry about that? Well, I think you're bringing up a lot of things that voters are still concerned with, right? You know, and unfortunately, these things have been politicized or the media has taken an off and run with it, uh, which often can be misinformation. But this is another reason that we have these new machines um, and people should feel good about that. Um, and a good way to think about it is the reverse of technology, right? So if all the power went out, which has happened, you know, I've worked in election protection, I've run it, and there have been counties where power has gone out, um, but we could still vote, right? Because we have paper ballots. So even if you can't put it in the scanner, um, also there's backup provisional ballots, um, you know, there are ways um, to protect the integrity um, of the administration of elections. So these new scanners and machines, they're required also to have a battery backup. Uh, so people should feel secure, uh, even if the power to go out, that there are backups. And that's also something, now that we have this paper trail, we can also audit. We're gonna talk about you know, why that is so important. And voting um, access and integrity, that security, we should know they're not, mutually exclusive, right? <laughs> they go together. Um, and there's a unique barcode on every single ballot. So this whole idea that like people are voting twice, or we're going to get hacked, or they're going to change results. Um, that's just an outright lie, you know, it, it's not going to happen. And that's why we have audits to reveal that type of um, if, if that did occur, but that's illegal. And do not try <laughs> to vote twice. Well, that's good to know that us machines are more secure and we're a little more sure now that our votes are being counted correctly but as i get older and less mobile and my vision isn't what it used to be you know these issues are beginning to imp impact my life are polling places being provided so that i can still vote as i get older and perhaps disabled sure i mean we've talked about vote by mail now just a little bit um and another reason it's so important is accessibility, right? So you've talked about maybe being older and mobility, vision, there's also language access. You know, an older or disabled person can sign up automatically, whether that's with new or before, um, that they can automatically get their ballot and that's at vote.pa.gov. But if you need assistance, again, call the league. Um, you can go on vote411.org. I'm saying all these websites and I'm gonna repeat them vote.pa.gov that's the main secretary of state website you know it's a one-stop shop but so is vote 411 you can look at your ballot um, and you can connect with your county board of elections um, so but if you do want to go in person it's great i always say you do you it's great to have options to vote um, there are you know ada the americans um, disability act you know um, that there are laws to be compliant i would like to say every place should be compliant. 
but they're not. Um, and that's another thing that you can look up on vote.pa.gov or call your county board of elections. Again, counties administer our elections. So if there is any kind of um, way that you're inhibited from voting, we wanna make sure that you can access voting. There's also language accessibility laws. Um, if there's through the census, the recent census, we know that certain populations, whether that's Spanish, Chinese, certain counties now are required to have ballots in those languages to account for language access. Um, but with respect to technology, these machines are already ADA compliant, but if you can't fill it out, there's even remote access if you're visually impaired, um, hearing impaired, and you are absolutely allowed to have assistance in voting. Um, you please make sure to tell people at the voting, um, at your polling place, because that's, we really wanna make sure people know. So there's ADA compliance, um, another great group, um, PA uh, disability group, they are also tracking all of this. So we want to make sure it doesn't matter if you're physically um, or, or somehow, um, you know, in, you have an inhibition that we can make sure that you vote. Well, that's assuring to know. Yes. <laughs> now, you've mentioned the word audit a lot. That seems to be a hot button item. You know, are our elections really audited or is just this something people talk about? Yes, absolutely. You know, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole again of something that's been politicized, but I really want to assure people we already have audits. That's why we have those new machines that I told you about that have a paper trail. And actually, there's not just one, there's multiple types of audits that have been done in Pennsylvania. Um, so, you know, there's two basic types. I'll just tell you that there's one right away that the county board of elections, as again, the counties each administer their elections, um, they're required to take a sampling, a random sample of at least 2% of the ballots or 2000 ballots, like whichever is less, uh, or, right? Because you and I live in populous counties, but there are other counties where, you know, 2%, it might be less than 2000. Um, and then there's a different type of, of, of audit, which really came about because of this paper trail and our new machines, which are risk limiting aud audits. So R, you might see RLAs, and that's an acronym for risk limiting audits. And these are procedures that take a statistical method, you know, that they're looking at confirming election outcomes. So they examine a random sample of paper ballots. Again, that's why the paper trail is so important. And they compare those votes on the paper to the totals, right, to confirm that out that outcome um, by the machine and the and to make sure the winner actually won. So what couldn't happen in uh, 2016 that I mentioned can now happen and did happen to confirm our results in 2020. So this is something people should feel really good about. Um, and that's, you know, this is also a way to confirm a full hand count um, should that come, it will be talking about recounts, but people should feel very good that there are audits. Well, that's really good to know, Jamie. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad to know we're getting all this auditing done. But there's another issue that I keep hearing about, and that is voting by mail. You know, people think it's not safe. People think it's not secure. Do they really have any reason to think that voting by mail is not the way to go? You know, I still have people say to me to this day, you know, um, including people, family members um, that say to me, you know, I can't vote by mail. I need to go in person to know my vote was counted. Right. I'm sure everybody, some people are in here nodding their heads. Maybe that's even you. Um, that's, you know, it is, I want people to vote. I want them to feel good. You know, like I say, you do you, but vote by mail, you know, it's kind of this perfect storm, you know, it's new to PA and it rolled out during a pandemic, during a major election, but you know, it, it's another thing that has been politicized. Um, and so that perfect storm of, you know, attacking vote by mail, it was overwhelmingly um, in Act 77, vote by mail was expanded. It used to be you needed to be absent. So if you go on to apply, they're going to say to you, are you absent? But what we what happened is Act 77 added language 
um, to make it so that anybody uh, could apply to vote by mail. You didn't need to have a reason to be excused. Um, so each vote by mail ballot has a unique barcode also, like you can even track your ballot. Again, vote.pa.gov, there's a link to that. Uh, so this idea that like uh, vote by mail isn't secure and it's somehow not gonna count, that's just bogus. I don't really know what else to say, but that it's just totally bogus. I make a point to tell people, hey, I voted by mail. And I think it's great. It's another alternative. You know, I went to a Dropbox. But if you hear otherwise, which unfortunately we do, it's a lie. And please do not try to vote twice. I mean, this is something that came up. Um, it is illegal and you will be caught. Like I said, we have audits, we have unique barcodes um, and you will be caught and you will be prosecuted. And it's very hard to do that. Well, it's good to know because I know there have certainly been a lot of lawsuits around this uh, mail-in ballots, like the naked ballots or things with missing signatures or, you know, is the, are there all reasons about the security for the mailing voting that we had all these lawsuits and things? So many lawsuits. I mean, I'm a lawyer, um, but I would like to avoid lawsuits, right? It's expensive. Um, and it also is something that became targets for misinformation of why. But again, counties do things differently. Um, and when the law is silent, meaning there's nothing in there, there can be discrepancies. So let me give you an example. You brought up you know, this idea of missing signatures. And that's when you get your vote by mail ballot, um, you have two envelopes, right? So we don't want naked ballots. You gotta make sure to use both envelopes. Um, but there's also a place for a signature. Sometimes people didn't fill in the signature. Some counties allowed curing, meaning they contacted you, Philadelphia, Monco, some counties, they went the extra mile to make sure, hey, you know what, I'm gonna contact this voter because I wanna make sure they fill in the state they allowed these, so there were a lot of discrepancies or what was or wasn't happening because it wasn't clear in the PA election code, right? So what happens when there's discrepancies? Well, guess what? It goes to court. I mean, even the very people, the legislature that passed these laws then tried to go to court to invalidate the law that they, they passed. So it's very confusing. Um, and many people don't like when, pe when things go to the court, but that's where it ends up. That's where decisions are made when the law is silent. Um, so these are some of the issues that came up, you know, naked ballots, meaning they, didn't, they weren't dressed. Your ballot didn't have both of the envelopes it needed um, and the signing and dating, you know, what, what could happen? Could you cure? Could you count those ballots even if it wasn't signed and dated? Um, so lawsuits sometimes happen, um, and especially when the, le the legislation is, is silent. Well, so these lawsuits have ha actually helped us know that we have to use both of those envelopes now. And we also yeah. know that you need to sign the outer envelope and date it with the current date. So don't leave anything blank. That's the moral of the story. Yes. Or it won't be counted. Don't be creative now. This isn't the time to put your birth date there. So as a teacher, I'm just telling you, you follow the directions. That's right. Follow Roberta and make sure that you follow the directions, you fill it out, you use both envelopes. Again, if you're not sure, vote.pa.gov, vote411.org, the, the league's you know, trusted nonpartisan resource. Uh, call your board of elections. You can call our league. If, if you don't, if you're not sure, again, you have so many resources and we want to make sure your vote counts. Now, I'd also like to check with you because I heard some people were voting like for their dead parents. Are really dead people still eligible to vote? <laughs> this, this is one that comes up a lot. I mean, I get, I get questions about this all the time. Um, and there was even a lawsuit more recently um, which involves the league about voter purges and how dead people were still on the rolls and that they're voting. I mean, we have a hard enough time getting people to vote. Um, we have unfortunately a very low registration rate. Um, so that's, that's really just bogus. Um, so I just want to say that those, you know, the, you can return, you can only return your own ballot under the PA election code. So, I can't take 
you know, my partner who lives in my house, I, you know, which is very common, right? Like, oh, can you drop my ballot off too, right? To an election office or a drop box? No, 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 no. Only you can return your own ballot to an election office or a drop box if your county has them. Um, but there are ways to get around that. For instance, if somebody's disabled or sick in your household, like I just had COVID, um, you know, you can, you can, and I couldn't get there and I had, I wanted to make sure it was dropped off. There are affidavits that can be filled out. Again, you can find that at vote.pa.gov. Um, and all of this stuff, you know, they go through it, but, you know, there is a way to get around that, but um, you can find all that information. I do want to say also, Pennsylvania, like all um, the states, has laws already in place that require the voter rolls, like the registration rolls, where you, you know, if you go in and you work in, I've worked in the polls, you see everybody's name, you know, that's required. So counties were sued, including your county, Delco, uh, Bucks County, and Chester. You know, that lawsuit, again, costing taxpayers, that was dismissed because there's already, uh, there, there are requirements to purge, meaning remove from the rolls inactive voters. So if you haven't voted in a long time, so it's really important to check your registration um, or if voters are deceased, you know, but again, please do not go and try to vote <laughs> for somebody else who's dead. I mean, unfortunately that did happen. You will be caught. Um, but it is so rare. We need to be focusing on making sure everybody votes um, and dead people aren't voting. Unfortunately, they're dead. Well, so all these lawsuits and investigations are being paid by me, the taxpayer, right? And that could be a yes, lot of money. Unfortunately, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I just saw on the Inquirer, the Philadelphia newspaper, something about ballot harvesting. What's that all about? Is this another reason why people think all this, you know, vote by mail is not secure? You know, vote, this is kind of one of those weird situations where, that we've seen where ballot, I think somebody's already asked me about this. Um, you know, ballot harvesting is where massive amounts of, uh, you know, register, you know, meaning I want to register to vote by mail. So I fill out a form um and it's sent back not to the county board of elections right um but it was all being sent to one po box and unfortunately it was partisan um so you have people complaining that this is possible creating a situation to show that it's possible to then complain that elections aren't fair is everybody following me here about this um i just want to say that's again why we have audits that's again why we have barcodes um, that are specific to each ballot. Um, let's focus instead on how we can make sure everybody has access to voting. Um, so unfortunately, that was found out. That's how good and secure our system is. Um, and we do wanna make sure that people know, for instance, I can't return a ballot in Delco, right? Because I vote in Montgomery County. Again, I'm gonna, I know I'm repeating this, counties each separately administer elections. So I'm going to go to a drop box in Monco, even though across the street from me is your county, is Delco. Um, so we don't want people, stick to your county. I always tell people, stick to your county. Well, I'm glad you mentioned drop boxes again, because that continues to be a hot button item. And I know I have one in my township building and I took my ballot there about a week ago and dropped it in. They have this solar monitor out there watching 24 seven to make sure only one person drops in one ballot and it's their own. And I don't use the mail as much as I used to because we know that's unfortunately not as reliable as we'd like it to be. But um, I think, you know, drop boxes are great. They work fine for me. So where's the beef? <laughs> you crack me up, Roberta. Um, well, you know, your situation is a great example of why drop boxes are a great alternative. Um, but this is another area where I talked about those discrepancies and that, you know, some counties do it, some don't, because the law does not explicitly tell counties, that's that election code I keep coming back to, does not specifically say you must do this, you must have a drop box. So we're talking about counties that barely have funds to staff, resource, you know, they're running two elections now, on election day and vote by mail. 
And then to add drop boxes, right? It's not some big conspiracy of election security and you must monitor. It's really resources, right? So you're in a county where the um, Board of Elections, you know, the Delco Board of Elections said to all the township municipal buildings, government buildings, right, that, you know, we'd like you to have a drop box. You know, some rejected that, but I would say overwhelmingly, you have a lot of drop boxes. We do. Then, right. And then I'll hear from somebody who is, you know, quite pissed because they live in a rural area that really could use having a drop box, right? Because they don't want to rely on the mail, which unfortunately, as you mentioned, has been not so great and reliable. And those resources have been diminished as well. Uh, so this is a great alternative. You know, this idea that, you know, it's, it's not secure, I think, unfortunately, again, has been politicized um, because of these discrepancies. But we've had many a person, including from CCAP, say, look, make this you know, make the law clear. Um, and CCAP being the County Commissioners Association, I should have been clear about that, um, who speaks for all 67 counties and they did go before our state legislature. So I know in my area, my Dropbox 24 seven, I don't have as many as your county. Um, and you know, it's great. And it, up until 8 p.m. on election day, I can go and I can use the Dropbox again, should be under PA law, should only be you. Now, we just had this come up on our statewide voter services call. Well, what do I do with that affidavit, right? Well, attach it, you know, or ask your, don't try to guess, um, don't put it in the envelope. It doesn't belong in either envelope, the secrecy or the outside envelope. But I know I've attached one with a rubber band or a paper clip. Um, but, you know, I just wanna bring up also the requirement that legislators are now saying that there needs to be 27, 24-7 um, security and streaming is another example of the limitations. If you don't provide funds and resources, you then can not claim things aren't secure. There are so many counties that just flat out don't have broadband access. And now you're going to require them to stream 24-7. So I think we have to remember the limitations and really be advocates as the league is for supporting our election administration offices. It's not a partisan thing, it's, it's democracy. Well, I'm glad to know that, you know, there are differences between the counties, but I also feel that a lot of people when they go to the polling places don't feel as secure as they could. I know some people don't like to be sort of hassled by the campaign workers and the party people out there. And can we just have like police security around the polling places so everybody feels safe? No, flat, flat, simple answer is absolutely not. Uh, police do not belong inside a polling station. We know for sure that when you heighten the police, meaning you have more police presence, it actually in turn heightens the sense of danger and fear, um, which should never happen inside a polling place. We do have in Pennsylvania elected um, officials like a judge of election who oversees the polling place. We have constables. Um, so if there is an issue, now I'm not saying, look, if there's an emergency call 911, you shouldn't need me to tell you that. But if there's an issue in there like campaign workers or so forth, you know, you're standing in line and uh, there are requirements that they be back 10 feet from um, the entrance to the polling place. Um, you know, look, make sure you tell the judge of elections. They might not know what's happening outside, right? Because they're busy working inside um, the, the polling site, the polling location. So, you know, if there isn't an emergency, um, I want to say also a major plug is the nonpartisan election protection program that's uh, with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, the League, um, so many other great groups. Um, and I know I let it. <laughs> um, and please utilize them. 866 R vote. 866 R vote. That information is also available, you know, whether you go to the state league, PALWV.org. Um, yes, and thank you, Meg. All of these websites um, are being put in the chat um, or phone number. There's also different languages. They have various different languages. So if you don't have language access, right? If you are, you need help and nobody's helping you at the polling place, that's an example of a time or a machine, like a scanner isn't working. 
you should definitely please, please, because we work with the county administrators and the secretary of state to make sure that you have access, right? That things are running smoothly on election day. You can still call it now if you have a question about vote by mail because it's no longer election day, it's election season. Um, so, but again, if there's poll watcher harassment, um, now guns, that's, that's something I've also been asked. Um, we are in a state that allows, you know, um, permit carrying um, guns, um, but you cannot bring a gun into a government building uh, like a school, which where many location, voting locations are schools. However, if it's a private building um, and somebody has a permit, yeah, I mean, should they be wielding it around? No, you should call 911. <laughs> Um, and unfortunately, that did happen in um, the the midterms uh, prior. Um, fortunately, nobody was hurt. But those are the types of things um, that do occur and are part and parcel. It, it really shouldn't be in the democracy that we're in that there are any impediments to voting. But unfortunately, there are. Well, I see we've already had a half an hour of discussion, Jamie, yeah. and I know you could discuss elections all day long, but I really want to talk about that other hot button item, which is recounts. Just yeah. how does a recount occur and why are they done? Yeah, recounts is, you know, it's still happening, it's still being litigated, still costing us as taxpayers, even those who are unaffiliated and can't vote in, in a primary election because we have closed primaries, we're all paying as taxpayers um, to defend the very laws that are being challenged. Um, so I really wanna point that out to people. Um, but recounts are different than an audit, right? A recount is saying, okay, I want you to recount every ballot and all the votes cast um, you know, to see if there's a change or there's some kind of fraud. Um, but recounts too in Pennsylvania, you know, I know it came in the news because of Arizona and others, and it was challenged even here. Again, waste of time and money um, because recounts automatically occur under Pennsylvania law, um, either requested by candidates or voters, but automatically happen if there's a slim margin, right? So if there's a slim margin of error, or sorry, error, it's not error, slim margin of victory, 0.5%, okay, in an election district of all the votes cast, automatically Pennsylvania, under Pennsylvania law, requires a recount. So automatically, if there's a, a small, and now we know we can confirm outcomes, right? Because we have a paper trail, which is great. Um, but there's also a law that, and this happened, um, particularly with the 2020 election, um, that you can challenge. So me, me any voter, um, if you're a registered elector, you know, duly, you meaning you register, you follow the requirements, uh, you need three uh, electors from a election district and they can challenge within five days um, of, the, of the election, they can challenge, but they need to actually have some meat behind it. You talked about what's the beef? Well, there needs to actually be some beef, right? Like they need to actually say there's some kind of fraud, there's administrative errors, um, and unfortunately, this too didn't really go anywhere and was an incredible waste of time and resources because you can't just be throwing false allegations out there. Um, and they're, you know, that's that's never good for democracy and never good for voting and certainly not good for our cash strapped uh, county election offices. Well, so Jamie, I guess from what you're telling me in the short time that we've been having this discussion, we don't need to worry about voter fraud and stuff like that, and our elections really aren't being stolen. So do you have any final words of parting wisdom to share with us before we go to the Q&As? Uh, well, anybody who knows me knows I could talk a long time about elections, uh, but I think it's just really important to be talking to each other and focusing on the facts and where you're getting those facts, right? Knowledge is power. Um, go to trusted nonpartisan resources like the league, vote401.org, make a plan to vote. And you do you, right? It, if you don't want to vote by mail, great, go in person. You want to vote by mail and not go in person, great. We know it's not rocket science. The more that we make voting accessible and easy, 
um, more people vote. <laughs> it's just really, that's how, and we should be looking at, is that what people are focused on? Again, voting and, you know, access and security, they're not mutually exclusive. You know, we hear that a lot and it's become a partisan, really a partisan battle. I, I know we're from the league and voting is nonpartisan and it's all about, you know, how are we functioning as a democracy to make sure every vote counts. So I just want to say also people shouldn't panic if they don't get results on election night. This is another thing that came up, um, you know, oh, there must be some fraud, you know, and I need my, we're so used to like instant gratification. Uh, but, you know, this is another thing that needs to change in the laws and the league and um, county commissioners association have also advocated that we need to allow the counting of millions of vote by mail ballots prior, right? So at least open, they call it pre canvas. Um, it's not counting, but it's allowing all that hard time consuming work of opening envelopes and getting them prepared to go through scanners we shouldn't have to wait till election night to start that, um, especially because people are returning ballots already. So that's, don't panic if you don't get the results right away. You know, people are watching TV and looking at the maps and counting things, um, but that really shouldn't make you panic because you should know it means every vote is being counted. So that's my final words, yay <laughs> democracy. <laughs> Wise words. So within Thank time, you. right, Meg? We are so good with time. Thank you so much to Roberta and Jamie uh, for, for your time, for that great information. Um, everyone, if you have a question to ask, please put it in the q and I'm seeing a couple kind of lingering in the chat. So if you copy over to Q&A, we'll make sure that we get it answered. Um, our first question comes from Annette Scheimer in Pittsburgh. Hey, hey. She asks, has any county put barcodes on ballots, on registration envelopes, or mail envelopes? If so, what do the barcodes denote? Um, let me know if you want me to read that again. <laughs> I think she's asking maybe because I brought up about unique barcodes. Um, I think she's asking about vote by mail, Annette. Hi, Annette. Um, again, this it is the requirement, right? So that's how I know when I voted by mail that I can, it's scanned. Um, it is on the envelope in it. Um, now, when you go to vote in person, you know, there's these big packs of ballots um, and you can't, you know, if you've worked in elections, you know, you need to count them. Yes, you know, um, that's how we know that it goes through and that, you know, um, that we can also make sure this is a very common scenario people apply to vote by mail and then they decide, no, I don't want to vote by mail anymore. I want to go in person. You are totally okay to do that. And how do we know to make sure that, that you're not voting twice? Well, that's because, you know, you need to, so if you want to do that, please take your vote by mail ballot um, and go in. And that's how they check, you know, um, side by side. We do have board of elections groups that do it. I know Roberta's talking. Uh, or once the same, but if all else fails, you know, that's why we have this backup system of a paper trail. Um, and yeah, it's an Adrian's talking about the envelopes. Um, all else fails, when I tell people you didn't get your ballot. That's unfortunately, we, you know, we had a very delayed uh, petition process because of redistricting. So some ballots, you know, they take a while to print, um, but you should always, always go and ask for a provisional ballot. That's your always your backup. Um, and that's, you know, people make sure now they're not gonna count a provisional ballot if they see, hey, this person returned a vote by mail ballot. So all of that is checked in the canvassing after an election. That's the computation of votes. I just wanted to reinforce what Adrian said. Don't just bring your mail-in ballot back yeah you got to bring the envelope. you have to bring the envelope and the mail-in ballot because the envelope is where that barcode is so we want to make sure right. it's secure and safe thank you for repeating it so just like you don't want to mail a naked ballot you don't want to return a naked ballot so bring it all in uh you know unfortunately it happens sometimes you know people have asked me what about if the envelope is ripped um that has happened right um what if my ballot is ripped 
there is a process, you know, the ballot, I still tell people because they couldn't go get a new one from voter services in time, please still fill it out. There's ways to make sure everything you vote will still be counted. Um, there's a reconciling that's done. Um, and there's a process for that. So they're not creating anything and they're not, you know, you know, even my brother said to me, oh, there's all these ballots that were found in a dumpster. You know, again, I say to my brother, we can barely get people to go vote and you're worried about ballots in a dumpster. Um, that I don't, I don't know what that story was, but um, it's not like you can then just take those and stuff them into a ballot drop box. They will not be counted. <laughs> Thank you. Great, great advice. <laughs> um, so another question from Annette, has any county used outside printers and who are they? I'm assuming she means ballot printers, unless- Yeah, okay, so Annette, great questions. Um, this is getting more into the nitty gritty. There are very few printers. Um, if you are interested in what your county uses, again, what I say, each county administers their uh, election separately. I know about our ballot printer here in Monco, we did have a problem um, that was quickly taken care of, thank goodness. They were on top of things. Um, but yeah, this goes through an RFP request for a bid, right? You know, and there are printers um, that are both in PA. Um, I don't know about Allegheny. I don't believe your printer. I don't want to, don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure Allegheny County, where you are in it, um, is not within your county, but there are printers within Pennsylvania. Um, there are a select few, um, and this is tracked. I mean, I don't know the purpose behind your question, but um, there is a, you know, if we did have more resources, this could be something that is looked at. You know, it isn't a big conspiracy, again, of voter fraud. Voter fraud, the only fraud about voter fraud is that there's voter fraud. It's usually an administrative error, a printing error. Um, so we had a delay in printing because of the timing um, of a late petition. You know, those districts weren't decided yet. It isn't you know, it isn't a big conspiracy. Message of the night. It is not a big conspiracy. <laughs> it is not. And I'm totally into conspiracy theories and true crime and all that. So I'd be the first to tell you. <laughs> um, we have another question uh, from another attendee who asks, if I don't follow all the instructions, will voter services contact me? And I assume this attendee means instructions on their mail-in ballot? My reply to you, I don't know which county you're in, but it's fine because I'm going to tell you first, follow Roberta's advice, do follow the directions, and no, you should not expect your county to be curing. I talked about curing. You should not expect that anymore because we've had litigation knowing and telling you, you got to use both envelopes, right? Make sure no naked ballots, you got to date that and it's not some birth date. It's the date you are returning it and you need to sign it. People are scared like, oh, my God, my signature doesn't match. You know, just look at your license or another paper that you've used more recently for your voter, maybe for your voter registration. If you're so paranoid about it, you can contact your voter services, your county, and they will actually show you, you know, you, if you show proof, you, they will show you your signatures so that it it matches, um, but you want to make sure to follow the directions. Yeah, Roberta has. Uh, I was wondering, you know, sometimes people make mistakes on that ballot, so they wrote for the right, wrong person. Too. What do they do then? Um, I would always say make sure you know don't take a chance. Um, I've seen situations where they put the wrong date, right? They put their birth date. They crossed it out and put the correct date and it was fine because it followed the, the, the laws, right? The real thing that came up in litigation is when somebody forgot to date, so it was empty. And some counties were counting that and they weren't. But other mistakes, um, unfortunately, somebody signs and it, I don't know, they didn't want to sign their own name. I suppose I voted for the wrong person and I realized I, I filled out the wrong circle. Um, you can go to up into the election day. That would be a situation where I hope that you can go in person and maybe return that ballot. If you can, you can put stuff on there. Um, and maybe in this instance, somebody made a mistake. 
Um, there are ways, right? So we still have time right now that you can go to your election office and request, you know, I know in my area, I have satellite offices, you know, they're closed right now, but, you know, I can go to Norristown in Montgomery County and say, you know, I want a new ballot and you have to furnish, meaning give in the previous ballot and they will give you a new one. And they track all that because again, we don't want people voting more than once and they have unique barcodes and so forth. So all of that is tracked, um, but it happens. I mean, you could cross out one and vote all the others and it will still count all of those that you didn't cross out. I hope that Thank answers. For that. <laughs> I, I think that did. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, we have a question from Matthew who asks, how can we avoid conflation of the normal audit and recount process with partisan reviews? Should we dignify such even calling them audits because they're not of past elections, which by their own admission cannot change the outcome either? So how can we avoid yeah. conflation of the normal <laughs> audit and the recount process? Yeah, I, I, reviews? <laughs> I, yeah, I think I got the crux of the question. You know, look, this comes up all the time, especially People would tell me they don't think the results are correct. And, you know, I usually bypass all of the partisanship because, again, voting, should, there are plenty of people, I could tell you probably thousands that I've helped that me personally, maybe I didn't agree with their politics. But at the end of the day, we want everybody to vote. And that's usually where I start. And then I say, you know, some people have so doubt in our system, but you know what? I feel better knowing. And you know, you know what I learned tonight? I learned that like PA, we have a paper trail and we didn't even have that before. We can actually audit our elections and they're required to be audited. And, you know, these are things that I think we have to spread around the truth, the facts. Um, and that's the best we can do instead of maybe stoking fears and giving in to a conversation that is geared toward the wrong outcome, right? Like even the question, and I don't mean to pick on you, Matthew, because I get it too, which is like, well, stop the steal, stop the steal, you know? And that's unfortunate. That started right here. All roads lead on that insurrection, they lead back here to Pennsylvania. Um, and I tell people, if you're about voting and everybody voting, then that's where the conversation starts. Um, so I would go back and tell people, hey, we, we already do audits and they're required. Um, that's that sampling I told you about. We now have a paper trail with all new voting machines um, and risk limiting audits that confirm, can confirm our results. Now a recount comes up because somebody, you know, there's a small margin of victory that's required too. That didn't happen because there was a very large margin of victory. <laughs> that's a good point. Um, we have a comment slash question from Michelle who said, our league is considering having our members survey their polling places to assess whether they are ADA compliant. Any advice or guidelines we should be using? Absolutely. Number one, I hope you're, I don't know what county you're in, um, but I hope you're working with your county voter services or board of elections. This is certainly something that's their job um, that they should be doing. And maybe they'd be grateful for your help. As I said, many counties are cash strapped and understaffed. Um, so I hope you're working with them. And then um, PA Disability Rights has great election guides. Um, on ADA compliance um, and PA, <laughs> vote.pa.gov, you can actually find out if your polling place is, is compliant. Um, so there, there's great resources, um, but I would say first and foremost, um, contact your, your county election administrators. Um, they, should, they should know all that. Great. And I don't know, then, Roberta, um, did you have anything to add on that? No, I just think the other thing that's really tricky is the handicap parking. That's the tricky part because not all polling places have handicap parking. So even though they may be accessible, the distance there isn't always as much as we'd like it to be. Yeah, and I, I'll say also this is another plug. Um, there's a reason why even before we had vote by mail for everybody that we also had 
you know, allowing older um, adults, older voter registered voters, as well as those who are disabled to automatically get vote by mail. Um, you know, Pennsylvania, again, we're an outlier, you know, we're slow to change here. Um, but there are other states that only vote by mail. And it's an opt out, not an opt in system. So everybody gets a ballot. Um, it's automatic voter registration. These are all things that I, you know, I know as the league, I don't need to tell everybody else, but I would love them to be part of Pennsylvania. Me too. <laughs> um, so we have one more question in the chat. And um, if anyone else has any remaining questions, please put them in the, sorry, it's in the Q&A, not the chat. Um, so question from Rochelle, can you clarify spoiling the ballot at the polling place and getting a provisional ballot, what that means? Oh, Rochelle. Hi, Rochelle. Um, so uh, again, if you apply to vote by mail, there will be a list. Um, so if I went into the polling place, and I had applied to vote by mail, they're going to know that I applied uh, for vote by mail. Um, and so I don't just automatically get to go to a machine, right? Because again, we have a system of checks and balances there um, to prevent multiple voting and so forth. And then you're gonna be asked, do you have your vote by mail ballot? Uh, hopefully you do. And again, that's the whole kit and caboodle, no naked ballots, whether you're voting, you know, actually sending it in or you're returning it. So you'll return it. Um, that's spoiling, right? So it, it'll be cast aside um, and that'll be marked in the book. You know, there's a whole process and procedure for that, that hopefully as a poll worker, you'll be trained on. And if you're interested in being a poll worker, please, you know, PALWV.org. We have a whole program. Um, we do need uh, election workers, but you'll be told, you know, how to uh, spoil that ballot and then make sure that that person gets, you know, in my county, they would be given a paper ballot to fill in the bubbles and then put in the scanner. Um, or if you're in Philadelphia, Northampton, some of these counties that have the touch screen, you then would go there. Um, but if you don't have the ballot to return, um, you then that would also be marked. Um, and you would be noted that you fill out a provisional ballot um, again, this is all training that happens if you're a poll worker. If you're not sure about this, PA, a vote.pa.gov, vote.pa.gov. That's um, the whole process is very common. People have decided they don't want to vote by mail. So they're, and they have time, maybe they want to go in person. So it's really, it's good to have options. But again, we have a system of checks and balances so people can feel secure. Um, in in voting. I hope that helped, Rochelle. <laughs> Definitely. Well, that was all of our questions. So Roberta and Jamie, do you have any final remarks you'd like to share? Um, I just want to say again, you know, talk to each other. Um, you know, people are weary of politics. You know, I grew up in a house where it was still like, you know, you didn't talk about, you were told if you go on a date, like don't talk about religion, politics. That, that is just so not the norm. You know, politics is your everyday life and voting shouldn't be a politicized partisan um, issue. It's nonpartisan and let's talk about it, right? But make sure we don't spread misinformation and stoke fears. And I just like to say as a teacher, don't be afraid to ask a question because I think, you know, that's what the League of Women Voters is here for. So if you have a question, Please don't hesitate to get to Meg, go to the league website, post it. She knows who to call to get the right answers. And we don't want anybody to go away feeling that they're afraid to ask or they don't know what to do. So ask a question. A lot of kids don't want to raise their hand. That's okay. Now we can do it on the computer, almost anonymously. So get those questions out there, get them answered, so you'll know that our elections are fair, secure, and your vote actually does count. Absolutely, Roberta. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that the state league and all of our local leagues are here as resources for you. And the election is the primary elections next Tuesday. 
We know that there's a lot of candidates on your ballot that you could be voting in a new district, finding a new polling place. Um, so to get to again, lift up the resources that we have, vote411.org is your one-stop shop for all things elections, finding your polling place, checking your registration status, um, learning about your candidates and even ballot questions. Um, so, and we also have a nonpartisan statewide candidates forum that is pre-recorded on our website for your reference. So I just dropped the link for that in the chat. So please check that out as well. And we'll be sending a link with this recording as well as all of the links we mentioned, the resources to you as registrants. So thank you so much for being here and happy voting. We wish you all and the I best say, on Tuesday. Anybody, whether you're unaffiliated, third party, you can vote on ballot questions. So if you're in Philly, you also there's special elections. You can vote in those elections, even if you're not a registered Dem or Republican voting for those respective party candidates. So please tell people to go to vote411.org, put in their address and make sure um, that they know, right? Like we just heard tonight, Reading has some ballot questions. You know, if you're in an area that has a lot of unaffiliated, what we call independent voters in Pennsylvania, that they know that they can vote on ballot questions and in special elections. Absolutely. So with that, we will sign off. Thank you so much from the State League, the Radnor League, the Lower Marion and Narberth League. Thanks for being here. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye.